Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, Mata Batten Part 1. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in 2005 with a girl, Aelia, going out of their house to fetch her little sister, Abel. Aelia runs into their gardener, with whom she quickly exchanges pleasantries. Aelia repeatedly calls her Abel's name, but she receives no replies until she sees her sister facing an old flowerless tree. Aelia comes up to Abel, who is wearing headphones. Abel informs her sister that someone is hiding behind the tree. Aelia slowly walks towards it, but she sees nothing. Abel insists that someone was behind the tree, and he even warns her not to stay at the house, because he owns it. Aelia dismisses her, as Abel always does this. Aelia tells her sister that her imagination is playing with her. Later that night, their mom tries to take Abel's headphones, but she pleads to sleep with them, as it keeps her from hearing strange noises. Meanwhile, while Aelia studies in her room, a man dressed in white suddenly passes by and walks towards Abel's room. Aelia feels his presence, so she goes out to check Abel in her room. The man suddenly comes out and locks the door. Their parents quickly go up as they hear their daughter scream. When they open the door, they see Abel wriggling like something is on top of her. They also see scratches on her legs. The mother calms Abel, while the father checks out the room to find the attacker. However, the attacker mysteriously vanishes into thin air, so their dad asks Aelia what she saw, but the fear silences her. Ten years later, Aelia now works in Bangkok. While Aelia does her work in a coffee shop, the waiter gives her a cup of coffee. Aelia is confused as she did not order anything, so the waiter points out the gentleman sitting near her. Aelia smiles as she sees her boyfriend, Davin, walking to her. Aelia closes her laptop and talks to Davin. Shortly after, she receives a phone call from her uncle. Aelia answers it, and her mood quickly changes as she receives bad news. Following that, Aelia returns to their new house with Davin, where her uncle informs her about her parents' death. They got into a car accident with a truck carrying steel. The vehicle suddenly stopped, and the steel went through her parents' car. They were immediately taken to the hospital, but they died in the ambulance. The uncle adds that they cannot stay in the house anymore, as it is a residential house for her dad given by his company. They only have three months to pack up and move out, so her uncle suggests staying in their old house. After that, Aelia quickly goes to her parents' tomb to pay respect, before checking on her sister. Aelia and Davin see Abel looking through the window. Aelia introduces Davin, but Abel remains silent and hugs her sister. Then, Aelia informs Abel that they will be staying in her old house, as their dad's company will take their current home. On the way, Abel expresses her displeasure on returning to their old place, and claims that something is living there. After hours of driving, they finally arrive at the old house. The now old gardener offers his condolences to the girls, and informs them about the damages around the house. After that, they check out the rooms. Davin accidentally goes inside Aelia's parents' room, so Aelia fetches him, and the lights suddenly go out. Aelia immediately fixes it, while Davin carefully monitors her. As Aelia finishes, the chair suddenly breaks. Luckily, Davin is there to catch her. The two laugh at Aelia's clumsiness as they leave, while Aelia forgets her tumbler on the bed. As they go into another room, Abel comes inside, and she sees the tumbler rolling on the floor. Although scared, Abel checks the room and sees a human-like figure underneath the white fabric. Then the lights malfunction again. Abel breathes heavily as she watches the figure, which all of a sudden runs towards her. Abel quickly closes the door before the figure catches up to her. Later that day, Aelia convinces Abel to go to school as she has been absent for too long. But Abel stubbornly refuses. Aelia just leaves Abel alone as she knows she cannot change her mind. Later that night, Abel comes out of her room to take food downstairs. Abel hears noises again, so she wears her headphones and quickly climbs the stairs. Suddenly, she feels something down her body. Abel looks down and sees a ghost of a bloody man clinging to her legs while looking at her. Her screams wake up the others, and they immediately check Abel. They see her hiding underneath the blanket, so Aelia asks Abel what happened. Abel shares that she is praying, so that the figure will leave. Abel pleads with her sister to believe her. Aelia then suggests taking Abel to a new psychiatrist tomorrow, so her hallucinations will stop. Feeling offended, Abel informs Aelia that their mother never took her to a psychiatrist, but to a psychic woman. Abel adds that her third eye has been opened since she was a child, causing her to be able to see the dead. So the following day, they visit the psychic, who explains all the things to know about the third eye. According to her, everyone has a third eye at their birth, but only a few people are born with their third eye opened. The supernatural world is dark and unpleasant, and causes nightmarish feelings to those who can see them. Abel had her third eye open when she was five, and over time she learned to accept it. However, Abel struggles to fight her fear, as these beings can instill an unusual fear in humans. After hearing all about that, Aelia is still skeptical, so she asks the psychic to help open her third eye by force. Abel and Davin are shocked, while the psychic warns Aelia that once the third eye is opened, there is no way of closing it back. 
Despite the warning, Alias still wants to do it, and she informs Abel that they will go to a psychiatrist if she does not see ghosts once her third eye opens. Before she starts the ritual, the psychic reminds Alia that she will not just see these supernatural beings, but also feel their presence, smell them, and hear their voices. And so, the psychic performs the ritual and finishes it within a few minutes. Alia wanders the room after that, expecting something to come out or happen, but nothing happens. Disappointed, Alia just orders the two to leave with her, and firmly instructs Abel to go to school tomorrow. As Alia goes inside, she notices red marks on her arm. So she decides to go to the hospital to get checked up. As Alia waits, she meets a beaten little girl in a wheelchair, who claims that her father physically abuses her. The girl asks Alia to tell her mother that she still loves her father despite everything. The girl points out to her mother, who is at the pharmacy. Alia prepares to do the favor when the nurse calls her for her appointment. The doctor prescribes Alia vitamins as she is just tired. After that, Alia goes to the pharmacy where she sees the girl's mother still sitting there. Alia goes to her and delivers the girl's message, which offends the mother as her daughter died earlier in the morning. Alia is shocked by this, but she refuses to believe it, so she asks the nurse if she saw the little girl. However, the nurse informs Alia that she was sitting alone earlier. Overwhelmed by that, Alia runs to the restroom and frantically calls Abel. Abel informs Alia that more supernaturals will show up and they will even be scarier. Alia instructs Abel to come home and then she suddenly hears the toilet flushes. Although scared, Alia checks the gap underneath the door and sees a ghost of an old woman. Alia screams in fear, but the spirit pierces through the door and attacks her. Alia immediately runs outside and promptly goes to the pharmacy to buy her vitamins. When she looks at her side, she sees a spine-chilling ghost of an old man with a twisted head staring at her. Alia immediately goes to the elevator to leave the hospital, but it suddenly malfunctions for a few seconds. After the power returns, the elevator continues to go down. But then, Alia sees another ghost through her phone screen. Alia cries as she anxiously waits for her floor while the spirit slowly approaches her. Fortunately, Alia reaches the parking lot before it grabs her, so she immediately goes inside her car and drives away. However, Alia runs into a woman on her way to the exit. Alia immediately stops the car and checks the woman who mysteriously disappeared. So Alia checks underneath her car and sees the woman's feet. When she looks back up, she sees the ghost on the hood. Alia screams in terror and crawls back while the spirit crawls towards her. Alia closes her eyes as she screams. She is petrified when a group of people approaches her to ask what happened. Alia just ignores them, goes to her car and leaves. Alia immediately goes to Abel and hugs her as she gets home. After that, Abel shares her experiences with these disturbing beings. She says they are everywhere and comes out anytime, and when they do, they cause terrible feelings to humans. Abel remembers what the psychic said that she should suppress her fear so as to help the ghosts finish their unfinished business. Later that night, she sleeps with Abel while wearing headphones. Shortly after, Alia wakes up as she feels something strange. So she goes down to check if Davin is back, but she sees no one. As she goes to the kitchen, Alia sees a woman holding a knife. It suddenly appears in front of her, but it does not attack her for some reason. Right after that, she sees a little boy playing with trains. The boy suddenly stands up and charges at Alia, so she immediately runs away and hides. While she suppresses her fear, she hears the woman instructing the boy. Although scared, Alia bravely asks the ghost family if they need help, and they answer, house, as they cling to Alia's legs. Concurrently, Abel wakes up to pee, unaware that the ghost family is dragging Alia on the floor. Abel returns to the room and finally notices that Alia is gone, so she searches for her. However, she encounters a boy hiding underneath the blanket. Abel immediately locks the door as the boy attempts to barge in. Abel hears something in the cabinet, so she opens it and sees Alia screaming with her legs scarred. The two sisters hug as they cry together. The following day, the sisters go to the psychic and tell her about last night's event. The psychic informs them that the house the ghost family is talking about might mean two things. It may refer to possessing their bodies or to the house they are staying in. Once the ghosts succeed in possession, they will permanently live in the living world. After that, the group goes to the house, with the psychic leading them with her detector. It spins counterclockwise as they reach the room of Alia and Abel's parents. The psychic instructs the sisters to communicate with the ghosts, but she reminds them not to be afraid, as they will be easily possessed. After that, the sisters leave the room and Davin talks to the psychic. The psychic shares that not all ghosts can see each other because some do not even realize they are dead. Later that day, the psychic leads the sisters on communicating with the spirits. As they open their eyes, all of their consciousness travels to the past except for Davin. While in the past, they see a burglar break through the window and stole money from the safe. The father woke up and immediately instructed his wife to call the police. However, the burglar sliced off the father's leg, then left the family locked in the cabinet. 
Right then, the trio returns to the present, and the psychic informs them that it is the Sumarno family. It turns out, the incident happened before the girl's parents bought the house. The Sumarno family bothered the new owners as they disliked others living in their home. They might also possess the new owners to avenge their death. However, Aelia refuses to leave, as the house is the only thing they inherited from their parents, and she has insufficient money to buy another one. Therefore, the psychic suggests opening a portal to help these souls get to their world. Before they start, the psychic orders Davin to leave, as it will be too dangerous for him. Afterward, the sisters and the psychic hold hands, as the psychic opens the portal. Suddenly, Aelia gets thrown, and she immediately loses consciousness from the impact. Aelia's consciousness travels to the murder scene, and she cries beside the Sumarno family's corpses. However, the family suddenly rises and tries to possess Aelia. As Aelia wakes up, she immediately attacks Abel and the Psychic. So the Psychic and Abel quickly tie Aelia on the bed. The ghosts taunt the Psychic to remove them from the human world. The Psychic holds Abel's hand as she prays, but the ghosts are stronger. The lights go out, glasses break, and the bed starts to levitate. As they pray, the two suddenly return to the past, where they finally discover the murderer is actually the gardener. The two return to the present, where the bed suddenly drops, with Aelia still on it. Abel and the psychic immediately try to hold Aelia, as she's already got possessed, but they get hurt. Aelia forcefully frees herself and locks the two in the room, while she drags pieces of wood from the bed. The two immediately break the door to stop Aelia from killing the gardener, but the front door suddenly locks. Meanwhile, while the gardener is in the living room, the light flicks until it finally breaks. So he goes to fix the breaker. He hears loud knocking on the door. When he opens it, Aelia immediately hits him with a block of wood. The gardener attempts to fight back, but the possessed Aelia is much stronger than him. The ghosts finally speak and ask if he remembers them. A flashback of what happened plays. He was formerly the Sumarno family's gardener, and during that time, his wife was experiencing a risky pregnancy. So he attempted to ask for his salary, but the father refused to pay him. In desperation, the gardener robbed the family, but it escalated into murder when he was exposed. Back to the present, the gardener locks the door before the possessed Aelia can chase him. However, Aelia stabs the door with shears that pierce through his body. Although wounded, the gardener still tries to run away from Aelia, but she is more powerful than him. She cuts off his leg and repeatedly stabs him. Concurrently, the psychic and Abel try to break the door, while Aelia cuts the old man's flesh. The two finally break the door, but the gardener is already dead. So they take down Aelia, who suddenly transfers a black substance to Abel. The two sisters lose consciousness, but Aelia quickly recovers. Unfortunately, Abel does not wake up, and the psychic informs Aelia that the evil spirits have already taken Abel to their world. Following that, they and Davin accompany Abel to the hospital. The psychic informs them that the only way for Abel to come back is if someone goes to the underworld to fetch her. Aelia cannot go alone, as the living cannot be with the dead. Aelia must be accompanied by something inhuman. The psychic sees the confusion on her face, so she goes to Aelia and lets her know what she means. A flashback plays of the younger Aelia and Abel with their mother. Aelia and their mother check out Abel's school, as she claims she saw someone on the counter, but the teachers found nothing. As they got busy, Aelia sensed a presence over the corner, who was a child's ghost that had a massive hole on her back. When Aelia looked at the corner, she found no one. It turned out, Aelia's third eye was already half open when she was a child. Back to the present, the psychic informs Aelia that she just helped her fully open her third eye. Then the psychic asks Davin if he can accompany Aelia. Then another flashback plays with Davin in an accident that quickly killed him while he was on the way to the coffee shop. However, Davin is unaware of this, so he lives like he is still alive. Davin was already dead before he got into the coffee shop, but Aelia does not know. Her boyfriend was dead all along. The psychic informs them that they need to go together, holding hands, so their energy can become one, and those evil spirits will not recognize Aelia. Before the ritual starts, the psychic reminds them that they need to go to the tunnel with the light once they gave back. Afterward, the ritual begins, and within seconds, Davin and Aelia get into the intersection, where they see lights at both ends. Davin marks their exit before they submerge into the darkness. They walk slowly into the dark hallway, still holding each other's hands and encounter numerous evil spirits. Although scared, the two continue to walk until they finally find Abel locked in a cage. Aelia lets go of Davin's hand to break the lock. As soon as Abel is out, Abel informs Aelia that someone wants her in the realm. Abel points out in the darkness, and the dead gardener comes out, charging at Aelia. They immediately hold hands, so the gardener cannot see Aelia. Then, the trio slowly leaves the darkness. However, they notice that the gardener is following them. At the intersection, they let Abel go into the light. After that, they bid goodbye, and Davin slowly lets go of Aelia's hand. As soon as he does, the gardener runs towards Aelia, but fortunately, the gate closes. After that, Davin runs to the other end, where he belongs. 
Two weeks later, Elia and Abel continue with their lives. Elia is in the bathroom brushing her teeth, when the showerhead suddenly turns on by itself. After that, she and Abel visit the psychic to update her about their recent encounters with spirits. Abel shares that she encounters a ghost that follows her from school to home, and she's currently staying at the treehouse for a couple of days. The psychic warns them to be careful, as these spirits might have a hidden agenda. The film ends with the two sisters suppressing their fears as they face the ghost of their childhood who has a hole on her back. They have accepted their fate, that their purpose is to help ghosts finish their unfinished business. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.